Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning friends, we have been discussing at length on wing the different types of strikes which are relevant for our aircraft and you might have seen by now one lecture by our chief engineer where he has demonstrated you various parts of the airplane. This was done to familiarize you on what are those aerodynamic surfaces you need to be careful as you progress in designing the first conceptual aircraft. And if you recall, we started with a mission requirement, what we said take off, climb, cruise then loiter and then landing, all right. We also are familiar with these two diagram, one is this, this is thrust, drag, lift, width. We are also familiar with diagram like this. This diagram reminds you about cruise and this one climb and we can also recall we have done something on maneuvering flight where you we draw the schematic as this, this is thrust, this is drag, this is lift and this is weight. And this is radius of turn. If you see these three diagrams, the moment I try to focus here, I write thrust equal to drag, lift equal to weight. And when I focus here, I write T minus D minus W sine gamma equal to M dV by dt. That is net force causing acceleration and here when I see important thing is if I want a particular radius of turn I need to generate a lift which is n times weight. So, this gentleman has to be more than weight so that it can go in a vertical loop. These are the primary maneuvers based on we will be actually configuring our airplane. In this diagram you could see the thrust plays an important role. So, as a designer I need to ask question how much thrust do I require for a particular airplane. If I try to answer that from this mission, the cruise mission, my answer will be I should have sufficient thrust which should be able to balance drag and that is half rho v square s into c d naught plus k c l square. When I see here lift equal to weight, it tells me I need to have that much of thrust which should give me enough velocity. If I see this equation, then it tells me I should have enough thrust which should give me enough speed so that for a given CL I should be able to produce adequate lift to balance the weight. That is how thrust get connected here as well. Because you understand 
if I want to give speed it will also cause drag. So, thrust should be good enough to handle this and if I come here I know that thrust should be enough to give me this right hand side balanced for unaccelerated flight. If it is an accelerated flight then thrust should be d plus w sin gamma plus m or w by g into whatever acceleration you want along. If I come here it says I should have enough v such that for a given C L lift should be equal to n times w n could be 2, 3, 1.5, 4. So, here also you could see thrust is implicitly present. So, that is where you could see thrust is extremely important and hence for designing an aircraft we should also make a judicious choice of what is the thrust requirement. When I talk about thrust Please understand the aircraft primarily will be covering having two types of engine. One is jet engine, another is propeller driven IC engine. So, whenever you are talking about propeller driven engine, we try to rate the engine in terms of power and jet engine we try to rate them in terms of thrust. So, this distinction should be in our mind. Okay. Now, come here this part you know this is warm up plus take off and explicitly what we understand that the airplane starts with v equal to 0 and thrust is applied on the aircraft if the aircraft here is the thrust sorry here is the thrust opposing is drag some lift will be there and then there is a friction force okay and of course because of there is a weight and you can draw a reaction which gets coupled with friction force. What is important here is that the airplane initially is at v equal to 0 right and there is a particular speed v lift off which you know it is 1.2 to 1.3 times v stall meaning is this if the aircraft attains this v lift off speed then the airplane, airplane will start taking off right it goes like this takes off that means from v equal to 0 to v equal to lift off this responsibility comes from thrust primarily this is thrust job. So, it has to accelerate the airplane from v equal to 0 to a speed v equal to lift off. Now, if I write v lift off is equal to 1.3 times v stall you will find between 1.2 and 1.3 times v stall is v lift off based on different aviation regulations. So, it does not matter for our understanding whether this 1.3 or 1.2 the main point is v lift off is if 1.3 times v stall that means 1.3 times under root w by s to w by s by rho c l max. Now, if you want v lift off to be smaller if I want v lift off to be smaller 
then options are W by S should go down, CL max should go up for a given air density. Right? So let us say how much will be V lift off will be primarily decided by what type of aerofoil you have chosen, which is having CL max, whether there is a flaps or not, we will come to those things and what sort of a wing loading. Wing loading low means large wing area. If there is large wing area relatively then takeoff speed will be less, but same time drag also will increase. It will become more sensitive to wind. So, all those issues we will be covering in the discussion of W by S and flaps high lift devices will cover on CL max. Today what we are trying to understand? Once we agree from V equal to 0 to V equal to lift off, I need to achieve, then also implicitly we say that I need to accelerate this airplane from V equal to 0 to V lift off as early as possible, so that this distance is less. That means I have shorter takeoff distance. We cannot expect that the aircraft will take a large takeoff distance beyond other than which is otherwise not possible. In the general tendency will be you try to design an airplane so that a short takeoff distance or takeoff distance is not that large. So, what is the message? Message is one is you try to see that V lift off is low that is taken care by this gentleman W by S and C L max. But once V lift off is fixed, then I want this distance should be as low as possible, as far as possible. So, it needs to have larger acceleration. So, larger acceleration means T by W should be high. This is important. If T by W is high or higher, then it will have a short, shorter distance for takeoff. So, T by W plays important role in deciding and affecting the takeoff distance. This is one. Now, come to climb. Let us see what is the issue in climb. In climb, you know that T minus D minus W sin gamma equal to 0 if it is climbing without any acceleration like a rectilinear path it is going with a constant speed. So, here you see T by W is equal to W gets cancelled to sin gamma plus D by W which roughly I can write as sin gamma plus 1 by L by D. I am assuming lift is equal to weight, the gamma being small. So, what is the message? Message is how much T by W you require will be decided by what is the climb angle you want. Right? Typically, transport airplane you will find T by W as 0 0.2 to 0 0.25. This is the number is okay. But if you are designing an aerobatic, which can go like this, can hold the airplane and do a lot of acceleration manu accelerated maneuver, then you will find T by W may be 1 or greater than 1. This is fine. So, then I write T by W as a role in climb. So, if you want climb rate to be higher, if you want climb angle to be higher, this T by W is the design parameter you need to have. But somebody may ask me question, when I am writing T by W, 
that means am I only talking about jet engine? What about propeller driven IC backup engine or prop engines? So, there is answer is simple, nothing new we require and you are familiar with this. We multiply both sides by V, so we get T minus dV is equal to W V sin gamma. And here you find that sin gamma V sin gamma, which is nothing but rate of climb, is given as T V minus dV by W, and T V is nothing but what? power available. So, power available minus power required by W which I can write power available from the engine by W minus power required by W. So, this man power available by W is somehow closely related to power loading. So, P A V available by W is actually by definition is inverse of power available by W is basically inverse of power loading which is given by W by horsepower that is the power available. So, T by W was thrust loading and W by horsepower available is power load it is a matter of definition. So, when we talk about propeller driven engine, we try to talk in terms of power loading. Talk about, when we are talking about jet engine, we talk about thrust loading. But at the same time, you will see that this power loading can be interpreted through thrust loading as well. We will discuss that, right. Okay. So this part I am stopping here. Now, we are coming here to call cruise cruise you know thrust equal to drag, lift equal to weight. So, thrust by W is 1 by C L by C D. So, for T by W cruise will be decided by what is the C L by C D cruise and this is important you must understand as a designer what is the meaning of If I write T by W equal to 1 by C L by C D and let us say this is C L by C D cruise and if you want to fly at optimal condition then C L by C D may be maximum, but not always possible to fly at C L by C D maximum. But important point is if you plot C L by C D versus V you will find you need to have a definite value of V to have C L by C D desired, right. That means, your thrust loading should be enough to balance that. That is why we call it thrust matching. That is why if you see in textbook when they are trying to find like this, they give a title called thrust matching. What is the meaning of that? If I am going to fly at C L by C D cruise, then T by W is 1 by C L by C D. I have to ensure that T by W for cruise is exactly given by this, then I will be able to maintain. We have been talking about T by W for cruise for takeoff or climb, but also you understand the moment we talk about thrust or power for that matter, we also ask a question, will this airplane be able to achieve the speed maximum? Assuming that at that speed, at that dynamic pressure, the structure will be good enough to withstand the load that is the assumption because you cannot go on increasing the speed or the dynamic pressure. Why I am saying dynamic pressure? 
at sea level you may be able to fly the machine at 300 meter per second, but at as you go higher and higher, if you want to fly at 300 meter per second, the structural load will reduce, the density is reducing. But the reverse, if you are flying at 300 meter per second at 10 kilometer, and if you want to fly at 300 meter per second at sea level, even if your engine gives you power, you have to ensure that now the dynamic pressure has increased, whether the structure will be able to withstand that load or not. So, what I am saying. Assuming that structure is good enough to withstand a design Vmax, the question is for Vmax whether my thrust is sufficient or not or the power is sufficient or not. Right. With this background, I can write P by W and W by S, they play their important individual role and also they decide the final design together okay and you will see why i'm saying that if i am talking about for short takeoff distance i need w by s to be low and next t by w should be high now, if you want T by W to be high, that means thrust generated is higher. So, so what happens for a given technology, it is expected that the engine size will increase, the weight also will increase. So, it may affect your takeoff weight. So, all this conflict will come. W by S low means S is very large. It may add up to the weight. Okay. So, it is finally, you will see that we have to do a lot of compromise. But Stand alone, we should know these things. Also, we have understood aircraft with high T by W will help in accelerating fast number two, climb more rapidly. Number three, reach higher maximum speed and sustain higher turn rates. So, obvious if you want to turn. You have to bank and you are banking and turning. The moment you bank, it will lose the height. So, you have to increase the speed because you may not be able to increase the angle of attack, it may touch the stall. You have to increase the speed. So, you should have enough thrust available, right? So, this is the advantage. The loose disadvantages are large engine, if you want. W by T by W higher, more fuel generally, and takeoff weight may increase. Why I am discussing this? That if you understand, finally, we have to do lots of compromise balancing act some advantage, disadvantages, they may be conflicting. Not only T by W, it may come from wing loading. So, as a designer, chief designer has to look every parameter and see what is his goal and he tries to find out that path which gives him what is desired. There is another point which is very, very important you people should realize. before you go to anything in detail, when I am talking about T by W, right, and if I write take off, what care I must take? If I talk about thrust, you should realize that thrust, what you are talking about static thrust.
their availability with altitude will drop. If you take a jet engine or a propeller driven engine, IC driven engine, you will find as the altitude increases, the density of air, of air reduces. So, your thrust available goes down. When you are talking about static thrust, which is generally rated at sea level condition, and if you are talking about thrust at cruise, you must ensure that what is the altitude at cruise? Say rho cruise. So, I must correct this to the altitude of operation. That is extremely important. Okay. This is altitude effect. Similar thing is true for power from a propeller driven as well. Directly proportional to the density. As density reduces, thrust available, power available also reduces, and mostly it is not a bad approximation rho at altitude by rho sea level. If you multiply with this factor, the thrust static or, or power static, you will get the value of that at that altitude. This is a general guideline. Now, think of a propeller driven engine. Its thrust also reduces with V speed. In fact, if you write this is V by N D, if you see the propeller driven engine, the advance ratio. So, what is the RPM, what is the diameter of the propeller, what is the speed? In general, you can say the thrust available from propeller driven engine, the dynamic thrust drops. It is always less than the static thrust. So, I need to know what is the dynamic thrust available during the operation. That is, if I am talking about cruise and moving with some speed, if I talk about T by W here, the T should be the dynamic thrust. Dynamic thrust plus the altitude effect taken here. Right? This is extremely important. Typically, power available for a propeller driven engine, they remain almost constant with, with speed. Of course, for a propeller, you have to ensure that the tip speed condition is met. For a jet engine, this is propeller. For a jet engine, it is roughly you can say thrust remain constant with V. So, dynamic thrust corrections, if you are doing for a jet engine, you can assume that okay, it is not going to change with the speed and power is almost remaining constant with speed. This is the initial design assumption you must have, which is not very bad assumption. This is fairly okay. But do not forget the altitude effects are predominant. It goes with the ratio of density at altitude by the density at sea level. So these two things you should keep back of your mind. So whatever T by W during operation we are talking about, we should talk about dynamic thrust corrected for altitude effect, dynamic power corrected for altitude effect. Right? That should be back of your mind. Some statistical data may be useful and every time I am telling you please refer some book on aircraft design whether it is Rema, whether it is Torenbeek, whether it is Google uncle, whatever it is, this sort of data gets updated and you must use those. T by W naught that would not is take off it versus max, m max, it is max number. 
this table is useful. Jet trainer, jet fighter, this is like dog fight, then jet fighter otherwise, and jet transport. T by W is calibrated as A M max to the power C and you will get the values of A and C from this table. For jet trainer it is 0 0.488 and C is point 0 0.728. This is for dogfight it is 0 0.648 and this is 0 0.594. This is this is 0 0 0.514, 0 0.141, 0 0.267, and 0.363. These are typical guideline numbers. And I again and again request you please use latest data sheet so that a lot of new new ingenious calibrations are given to make the designers handy. We are talking about thrust matching. That is T equal to T by W equal to 1 by L by D equal to 1 by C L by C D. And you know if it is a propeller driven engine, if you want to go for R max, then the condition was it has to fly such that L by D is maximum. So that is C L by C D should be maximum. So you put that number here for if your mission is getting a maximum range with the propeller driven engine that this will give you what is the T by W cruise requirement and you have to ensure that really this T by W cruise available at that altitude because you know whatever static thrust at ground available that is going to reduce at that altitude. You also know the weight of the airplane at the takeoff is going to reduce at that altitude. So you have to give appropriate corrections and ensure that T by W not takeoff is such that you at cruise you get this value. This is important. You would design your airplane such a way that T by W at takeoff is such that when it goes for a cruise to an altitude, T by W cruise is given by 1 by C L by C D and C L by C D given by C L C D maximum for range maximum for a proper propeller driven airplane and similar for a jet aircraft. You know that C L by C D it has to fly for range maximum is 0.866 L by D max or 0 0.866 CL by CD maximum depending upon what type of airplane you are flying or designing the requirement for T by W crew should be evaluated like this and you should design that aircraft T by W not take off such that as it goes to that altitude you know very well thrust is going to reduce to correct the thrust for altitude and for dynamic thrust, correct the weight because fuel is going to change and ensure that this after doing that T by W cruise given by 1 by C L by C D is available. That is a that is the designer's job. Okay. We were talking about V max. It is important to see now if I am thinking of V max maximum speed, what are the design parameters they are going to play a role, right? Before I go for power loading. You know for a cruise you see thrust equal to drag, so I can write this half flow V square 
this dynamic pressure S into C D naught plus K C L square and K is 1 by pi aspect ratio E and C L square here. And also I know C L is W by Q infinity S. So I can write thrust equal to Q infinity S C D naught the mechanical plus W square by Q infinity S pi E aspect ratio. What I have done is C L replaced by W square by Q infinity square S square and this Q infinity one gets cancelled, S S get cancelled. So this is remaining. So I can write Q infinity square S C D naught if I do like this minus Q infinity T plus W square by S pi E aspect ratio is equal to 0. And if I assume solve this for for a given Q infinity T equal to T max thrust available is maximum because corresponds to V equal to V max that you know very well in performance course if I plot thrust versus V this is thrust required which is equal to drag for the cruise and thrust available with V almost remain constant. So, this is the point which is V max I am talking about that is how it has been developed. If I do this then I get an expression this is important V max is equal to T by W max into W by S plus W by S T by W square max minus 4 C D naught by pi aspect ratio E you can refer this expression from Anderson Anderson book on interaction to flight. So, what is this expression is telling that V max will increase if T by W max increases. V max will increase if W by S increases. Do you see the interesting point? V max will increase as T by W increases naturally it will give more acceleration but V max will increase if W by S increases that means S is smaller. So, drag is less. So, it will accelerate fast. Remember for V stall I want W by S to be smaller. If W by S reduces wing area increases. So, V stall reduces, but if you want the V max then you want W by S to be higher. So, that area is less drag is less, it accelerates. So, you could see that V max increases if if you want to increase V max you need to increase T by W maximum W by S and also reduce the parasite drag coefficient. The next class we will see this term you, you yourself can do it this is linked to L by D maximum. Check yourself. So, you will understand if I want to synthesize the design I need not only talk in terms of T by W, I have to look for W by S, look for L by D, I have to look for C D naught, I have to I have to understand what altitude I am going to take off or cruise, all these things they merge to have a good optimal design. Right? Thank you very much.